Alright, what is up guys and welcome to the first real episode of Swedish Tea where we break down a full problem in Katis and look at the solution from start to finish um, from the problem to an accepted solution in Katis and we're doing it in Golang so um, I would suggest you go to um, the golang.org and uh, to the documentation and install it on your uh, preferred system uh, that you will be working on and then you can navigate to open.catis.com um, assuming that you have your account already uh, you simply type in and search for job expenses which will be the problem we're solving today so the problem here um, is simple you have um, this guy Robin who wants to uh, provide some numbers to his accountant and his accountant tells him to only provide him with the expenses. However, Robin mishears him and he provides him with both the expenses and the incomes. So um, our job is to find the expenses and sum them up. And we can uh, distinguish an expense from an income by looking at uh, if it's a negative number, it will be um, an expense and if it's a positive number uh, it's an income and we shouldn't care about it. Um, in our input we also have uh, the first row always telling us how many of these entries uh, we have and then we only have uh, a second row containing um, a number of uh, incomes and expenses. So um, to get started we can open an editor of our choice I just set it up with the notepad plus plus here um, and in your go workspace folder you um, can simply create uh, this, um, this script and um, I put my in my go directory under uh, the sources and then under cut this and here I can create a new folder for this problem uh, So let's call this uh, job expenses um, Inside of our job expenses we have our go script uh, Which we also can call uh, job expenses dot go for simplicity uh, before we start uh, any coding, we should also uh, download the sample data files uh, which will represent what we can see here, uh, the number of inputs and the number of outputs. Uh, and we download them and get a zip file containing uh, this. Um, so let's open this up. So here we have our uh, samples and let's um, put them into our correct folder. So I just copy these and into my go folder, my sources, um, cut this, uh, job expenses and here alongside the script um, let's create a samples folder here for a nice uh, structure and then we can paste our our uh, three different sample sets in here um, now we're good to to go uh, to start coding so first of all uh, we want to uh, define the package um, that we want to include we also want to import um, the FMT to be able to um, print uh, our output and read from input, uh, standard input in this case. Um, and let's go ahead and create uh, the main function. Um, so we have something uh, we can kind of run and see that everything works with. Um, and let's just uh, 
print something here to see uh, that we're up and running. Um, now we can simply navigate to the, uh, the command prompt, our terminal, and run our script. So first we have to navigate to uh, the Go folder, the sources, um, to cut this, and to the job uh, expenses. Now we're in the correct folder and we can see and verify that we have both our job expenses uh, script here and also uh, the samples folder. Now we can run the Go script, uh, both compile and run it by uh, do go run and then the script name dot go. And yeah, now we get main initialized as expected and we can see that our, our script works. So now our main is up and running and uh, let's look at how we can actually solve the problem. Um, we know that our all of our samples will have the first row containing the number of entries that we'll have in the second row. So we always want to read the first row and it will always contain an integer with the number of row uh, number of entries that we expect in the second row. So um, a good uh, first approach could be to just read this first number from standard input and add it to a variable, um, an integer. So uh, to read from standard input, we can use the scan format, the scanf and we can read in either into a string or um, an integer and we will have to read this integer into a variable so we add a pointer to a variable um, in order to read it and store the data in a number of entries variable which will be an integer and this is a pointer reference to this number of entries variable. Um, now we should have our value um, inside our variable. So let's just verify this by once again just doing a simple printout and, uh, and see um, what we're working with. Um, so we're in the right directory and we can just run our script uh, like that and now we see that main is initialized but it's waiting for a standard input to occur and if we have the right thing here it should tell us number of entries is 4 uh, and it's working correctly it seems like um, another way of actually inputting a standard um, something via the standard input and a more convenient way, um, since we're working with samples files, uh, is to actually do this arrow and then input. We know that we have our samples folder um, in the same directory and then we can um, go into uh, the samples folder and look at, okay, what input do we have here? Uh, we have the first input named as zero one dot in and this file if we open it up we could open it up here um, this file uh, has three entries so uh, if we send in this file via standard input we should get a number of entries equals three um, and it seems to work for using a sample file uh, via standard input as well.